So let's put this empirical rule plan into action, shall we? Because it all seems a little much until we've done a problem with it. And then I promise it's not so bad. <laughs> okay, so we have a survey conducted by the National Center for Health Statistics. The sample mean height of women in the U.S. aged 20 to 29 was 64 inches with a sample standard deviation of 2.75 inches. Assume that the heights of women in the U.S. are normally distributed. In other words, the empirical rule is okay, right? So normally distributed, yay, that means empirical rule is a go. Uh, let me make a note. Because it has to be this shape that you see down below in order to be valid, right? So if it's not normal, we have other problems. All right, now when we're analyzing this problem, we can notice that the mean is 64. So let's see right there. So it says the mean is 64. So that's X bar. That's the mean. That's the center. And it's 64 inches. And then we also see that the standard deviation is 2.75 inches right here. And that's S. Oh, actually, I shouldn't say that. Um, and it's, yeah, it was a survey conducted. So this was a sample, right? So that was why it's X bar and S. If it was a population, you'd use mu and sigma. Now, for the sake of all of our sanities, I do have a computer printout here of what an empirical rule curve looks like, a normal curve looks like. So it's a bell-shaped curve. And what we're going to do is where the center line falls is where we're going to put the mean. So the mean is right here at 64. All right, now, this is the part that you have to be able to kind of get good at. You have to be able to gauge where the empirical points fall, the empirical uh, inflection points, sorry, the inflection points fall. All right, so what you want to do is kind of think about the bottom of the curve and the top of the curve, right? So your bottom of your curve is down here, your top of your curve is up here. Standard deviation is a little bit above halfway. So halfway would be right about there. And you want to nudge yourself a little bit above that. And then make it the same height on the other side. And those are your inflection points, and that's where your first standard deviation falls. That's one of the most important things, is to know how to do that. And it should be a mirror image. It should be the same distance, more or less. I mean, this isn't perfect. We're doing this by hand. <laughs> All right, so that's where the first standard deviation falls, right there. So how do we find this value? What we do is we take 64.75 and we add on 2.75. That'll get us this next number. So let me go grab Desmos. Sorry, I'm, I'm adjusting videos, as you can see. All right, so 64 plus 2.75. That gets us 66.75. And then I can find the other one by 64 minus 2.75, 2.75, and that gets me 61.25. Okay, so this is 66.75. Technically, these are all in inches. They all have the same value, or unit, I should say, as the data set. So this is inches, this is inches, this is inches. We just don't bother usually writing it, but nevertheless, there it is. All right, now, you just keep going, <laughs> right? So this distance, whatever this may be, so let me take out my ruler and let me measure it. Oh, let's see. It's about two centimeters that I have going on there. So if that's the case, then the next line should fall two centimeters down the way. So that would be right here. And the next line would fall at two centimeters down the way, which would be right here. And same thing on the other side. If I put that at 20 centimeters, then 18 centimeters should be right there. 16 would be right there. And again, you don't have to use a ruler. You can kind of eyeball this. This distance and this distance should be the same, right? And this one and this one should be the same. And they should all be mirror imaged. Now, to find these values, you keep adding on 2.75. So the way I found this one was I added 2.75, and you would just do so again, and do so again, and so on, to find these two values. And then you kind of stop. Technically, the graph keeps going and going and going, but it's just tedious to keep going any further than that. To go this way, we subtract 2.75, and then do it again, and do it again. 
So I'm going to go grab Desmos and get those numbers. So I have 64 point plus 2.75 point plus, plus another 2.75 gets me 69.5 plus another 2.75 gets me 72.25 minus another 2.75 makes 58.5 minus another 2.75 makes 55.75. All right, so we're just going to fill those values in on this graph. So this one was 58.5. This one was 69.5. This one was 72.25. And this one was 55.75. And again, it keeps going and going, but we generally stop around 3, unless specifically instructed to do otherwise. All right, now what about the percentages? Well, it says to label the parameters, right? So the parameters is putting in those numbers on the number line, I'll tell you that. That's numbers and vertical lines, right? That's what those are, right? So the numbers on the x-axis, I should say. That's what the parameters means. And then it says to label the percentages. Well, where's that coming from? Well, that's from the rule itself. Those are the percents inside the curve. And those never change. The, the vertical lines also never change, really. I mean, they always kind of fall where they fall. What changes is these numbers on the x-axis down here. But this number will be the number it was on the previous page. It's 34%, 34%, 13 and a half, 13 and a half, and so on. So this is 34%, this is 34%, this is 13.5%. Those are the rounded percentages that our textbook uses, so that is what you are using. Um, this is so small I can't fit it in there, but it's 2.35% and 0.15%. It's actually less than 1%. It's very small. And remember, that keeps going. I mean, that is every woman that is taller than 72.25. So if a woman is, you know, seven feet tall, she falls way over here to the right, but she's as part of that group because that 0.15% is really everybody that direction and everybody that direction is 0.15% and this is 2.35%. That's the part that's easy to lose sight of, that it really just keeps going and going and going. All right, then... Once you have this all filled out and beautiful, right, and the percentages, remember, are just the percentages from that lines or from that curve, from the rule from the previous page, then the questions themselves are not actually that hard, right? Now, it seems crazy, but it's true. <laughs> okay, so let's look at them. So the first one says, estimate the percentage of women that are between 64 and 69 and a half inches tall. Okay, so 64 inches is right here. Boom. 69 and a half inches is over here. Boom. So the percentage of women that fall between that would be those two percentages added up. Sorry, I turned off my light there for a second. So you'd add those two percentages. 34 and a half, 34 percent plus 13 and a half percent. That's the percentage you get. So I'll just write that. So 34 percent plus 13 and a half percent makes 47.5 percent. Done. It's those two sections. Next, estimate the percent of women that are taller than 69 and a half. Well, 69 and a half is right here. So taller than 69 and a half would be all the women that are over here. Right? Which is these two percentages added up. So it's 2.35% plus 0.15%, which makes 2.35%. Um, the, this one's really easy. <laughs> the percentage of women that are taller than 64. Well, 64 is right here. So taller than that would be these four. But remember, I mean, you could go add those four if you wanted to. But remember, the whole curve makes one. It has to make 100%, right? And if this is the middle line, then half the women are above that height and half the women are below that height. In other words, it's 50%, right? 50% are over here. Now, you could add these four numbers up. It, it adds to 50%. So 34% plus 13.5%. But you don't actually have to show this work if you don't want to because you know that it must make 50%. It's half the curve. 
All right. Um, letter E is one that a lot of students get incorrect, so let me show you. So 61.25 inches tall is right here, if I can get my pen there, and then 72.25 is over here. So the women that are between those values will be all these spaces between those lines. So you'd add up 34, 34, 13 and a half, and 2.35 and you stop right there. You don't include the 0.15 because you're stopping at 72.25. This 0.15 is all the women that are taller than 72.25, so they don't get counted. Okay, so we want 34% plus 34% plus 13.5% plus 2.35% plus 2.35% plus 2.35% we can add those up in our head or we can go grab Desmos. So 34 plus 34 plus 13 and a half plus 2.35 makes 83.85%. Now I know it says estimate, but it doesn't this whole thing is an estimate. If you remember, the empirical rule itself is an estimate. It says roughly bell-shaped will be approximately this much percentage, approximately this many percents. So all of this was estimated anyway. It was already approximations. And so we're just using those approximations to get estimates. So don't round this, right? Do not round. Stick with the percentages given. All right, now, were any heights for women considered unusual? Okay, well, unusual is so important. We talked about it before, but we're going to say it again, which is anything beyond two standard deviations, the same thing that was written in an earlier piece of this section, anything beyond two standard deviations away from the mean is unusual, or anything with less than 5% probability. Ah, so we can see those values less than 5% would be these ones. Right, so anything past 69 and a half, right, which is two standard deviations away, and then two standard deviations away this way. See, here's the mean, one standard deviation away, two standard deviations away. So anything past this point is unusual, and anything past this point is unusual. As a matter of fact, I could flag those. So um, I'm just trying to think about a color that I haven't used. I've used so many of them. So I think what I'll do is say this, from this point onward, is unusually high values, and from this point lower is unusually low. And it didn't ask for this, but it's just helpful to know, right? So these are the unusually high values. The unusually tall women are over here. Unusually short women are over here, right? So this would be tall because of the context this is, and this would be short because this is the context, right? We're talking about the height of, of women. So it's asking us what heights for women would be considered unusual. Well, I just did it, right? Anything taller, right? Unusually tall women, unusually, there we have to sign it out, tall would be any women taller than 69.5 inches. So if you're taller than six or five, nine and a half, you are an unusually tall woman, which is true, right? This is real data. And usually short women would be any women shorter than 58.5 inches, which is about four feet, 10 and a half. 4 feet 10.5 inches, and this one, just in case you want to know, is 5 feet 9.5 inches. Um, if you're curious to how I calculated that, just because mathematically it's interesting, here I'll show you. Um, so I knew 5 foot 9 because it's easy. <laughs> so you take 69 point, oops, 69.5, divide it by 12 because there's 12 inches in a um, foot. There we go. And so you know, you can tell it's five feet. And then what you need to know is what's the extra, right? So then you take uh, 
0.79166666667 and you multiply it by 12 inches and you see, oh, it's nine and a half, right? So it's five foot nine and a half. And you do the same thing with the other ones. So you'd say 58.5 divided by 12, it's 4.875 feet. 0.875 feet is 12 or 10.5 inches. It's a terrible system. We should all switch to metric, but nevertheless, there you have it. All right, now why? We never explained why. So we have to explain. So because these values, um, these heights are more than two standard deviations away from the mean, which was 64 inches, or and you could say that way. So you could say these heights are more than here, more than two standard deviations from the mean. Or you could say less than five percent of women. Oh, I should. One second. <laughs> I changed my mind about how I wanted to write that. Sorry about the glare. So less than five percent of women are these heights. Either way, you don't have to write both explanations. I mean, you should write them both in your notes so you have them. But when you're doing this problem, oops, let me, <laughs> hold on, let me turn this off for the sake of glare. <laughs> there you go. Um, so less than 5% of women are have those heights, right? So either way to explain it is fine. So you could say there are more than two, they, these women are more than two standard deviations away from the mean, or less than 5% of women have those heights. Either way is fine. Just for our own benefit, I'm going to write underline this bit. More than two standard deviations from the mean, less than 5%. Those are the two ways that we describe unusual.